Namaste, everyone. Thank you for joining me with Divine Vibrations with Chi. I'm Chi, and uh, today's daily affirmation is um, I follow the guidance of my heart. And uh, that is such an important affirmation because oftentimes there are so many different uh, distractions in the world that keep us from following the true um, guidance of our heart, right? Uh, so that is something that I would like to share with you today as a positive affirmation. So if you um, would also feel uh, that that is an affirmation that would help you, go ahead and put it in the comments. Uh, also like and subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you can get future um, videos that I will be posting. Uh, as uh, some of you have already started to know about me, uh, I like to talk about positive things and find positive tools and put them in my toolbox so that I can have a positive experience in my day. Because as we all know, there are so many things that can derail us. And uh, I really like to stay on track with uh, the things that keep me true to myself keep me moving forward in my own life journey and in the way that I would like to live my life as a human being on this earth. Um, I am so grateful for the opportunity to be able to not only make these with videos and share them with you, but um, for the opportunity of this amazing life that I have um, with my family, with my friends, and you, the YouTube community. Um, and have fun, right? Like have a great time in life because that's what life is really all about, really, is having fun and living your best life. And sometimes things don't always help with that uh, goal. So I have to sometimes find ways to reel myself in and um, put myself back on that track of positivity. So an affirmation is one way that you can do that because it is a positive mantra that you can say to yourself either silently or out loud. I like to do both. It just really depends on where I'm at. And um, But it's usually just a little short sentence like, you know, I, I follow the guidance of my heart. Um, and it's pretty simple, right? Because if you're staying true to yourself, if you're train, staying um, true to your um, life journey and, and trying to figure that out, uh, you're listening to your heart. You're listening to your own intuition and, and the messages that Source is sending you um, about what you should do. Uh, and we all know when we're not following our hearts because uh, things tend to show us uh, or indicate to us that we're not being true to ourselves. So um, I hope that that helps. Another thing that really helps me is um, affirmation cards. Uh, whether they're oracle cards, I use a lot of like oracle cards uh, and oracle cards are basically uh, just positivity cards that a lot of different authors have been guided to put out there um, on their life journey, right? Like, so they have been kind enough to share with us the nuggets of information that they've been given uh, on their life journey, and some of them are just quotes that people have compiled. Some of them are uh, divine messages that they have been guided to share on uh, either an oracle card or uh, some other pathway. It's no different than like uh, reading a book about positivity or uh, or uh, sharing in someone's journey. Uh, and I feel like that really helps us uh, along the way, especially when we find uh, other inspirational people that have led us uh, by sharing their journey. So a couple of uh, the cards that I like to use, uh, I will share with you, and I'll also post them uh, in the description box so that you, if you want to find them, you can. Um, but 
I encourage people to find positive ways to stay on track uh, with their life purpose. And, you know, those that can be challenged some days. So one of them that I have is by a Stephen Farmer. Uh, I want to say he has he's a, a doctorate, a Stephen, Dr. Stephen Farmer. Maybe not right, probably not. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. And he, um, yeah, Dr. Stephen Farmer, and you can read more about him or he has a talk radio show uh, and he's a soul healer and shamanic practitioner and um, also a licensed psychotherapist so he's uh, dealt with a lot of different things when it comes to mental health uh, and he has put out some cards and they're called earth magic oracle cards and these are awesome actually because um, well one I love the imagery on the front of the cards. Um, it's just absolutely beautiful. It's a tree and um, it's also for what we see of the tree and what we don't see of the tree, right? Kind of a lot like us, um, our outside selves and our inner selves. Um, super um, great visual analogy for the human uh, condition, I think. Um, but I don't know if you can see that. Let me just bring that closer. Okay, it's just gorgeous outside cards. And then the, the, the images on the cards themselves are super awesome. So he uh, has been guided to put together these cards, and I just love the messages uh, that come across in some of these. And oftentimes I feel like it's what the universe wants us to hear that day, and I usually ask for that kind of guidance. You know, let me know what I need to know today to be my best self. Uh, because let's be honest, we're all on our own individual journeys. We might be um, in relationships or we might be in between relationships. We might be mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, cousins, friends. Uh, but in the end, we're all on our own personal journey and we're all trying to, to find that it for ourselves. Uh, and I feel like the people that we often idolize, uh, whether it's, and I'm not trying to name drop or anything like that, but let's be honest, but like somebody that we idolize, whether it's Oprah or Beyonce or, um, or uh, whomever, really, uh, it could be an author. I love Stephen King. He's an amazing writer. And, you know, how do these people, like, reach their it well I think the reason that they reach their it is because they they figured out what their soul journey is um, what they stay true to their heart they were themselves and I didn't mean that these people didn't have challenges oh yeah they've overcome a ton of challenges just like you and I average people but the reason that they're their best self or we view their best as so awesome it's because the, they have overcome or have worked to overcome um, their fears in their own personal journey. And then they stayed true to themselves, figured out what was their, their factor, their, their reason of being here on earth. And then they put their energy towards that. Well, sometimes it's hard to know what that might be, right? Um, Sometimes we're confused about where we're at. I know in my own personal journey, I totally was confused. And I feel less confused now that I'm here in front of you. But, um, yeah, I was totally confused about what it is I want to do. I felt for a long time I was a people pleaser. And I would, like, um, you know, whether it's pleasing my parents or, um, or my community or whatever, I, I wanted to do something... Um, for them and then in that process I, I kind of gave up what I wanted to do actually for me and what fulfilled my soul and then I found that in a lot of ways um, when I finally discovered uh, that I was doing that that I was you know too much of a people pleaser I was too much of living someone else's dreams and goals and I also found that I hit walls right? Like opportunities that weren't coming to me. And 
that is a sign um, that people often don't pay attention to. Um, why isn't something happening for us? Like, we're putting all of our best foot forward. We're doing everything that we can for ourselves. We're trying to be positive, but yet it's still not happening. Well, sometimes it's faith and patience, but sometimes it's the wrong door. It's the wrong opportunity. It's not what was meant for you. And reevaluating that is in your life is super important in trying to find your own personal happiness. And it's not selfish. I know a lot of people think it's selfish to want to be happy. Absolutely not. The divine power wants us to be happy because happiness brings us abundance in so many ways. So it is not wrong to be happy as long as you're serving the greater good, not only of your heart, but the greater good, right? So uh, I just pulled out one of the cards in the middle and um, my little book fell. And uh, <laughs> this is an awesome book. This is an awesome card that came out. It's the Winter Solstice card. And uh, winter is coming. <laughs> <laughs> and it says reflection uh, how fitting for what we were just talking about it's a beautiful like winter scene with the pond and I love um, is it white lily? I don't know but it was beautiful Anyway, so it says reflection. So reflection is super important, right? Like what I just said is like you need to think about what is the best path for you. And sometimes it's hard to think through all of the noise, um, whether it's somebody else telling you what to do or your friends group. And oftentimes we kind of like, you know, listen to our friends and what they say, or we listen to other people that are influential in our life, or we give in that role of in influence um, over us and we haven't taken the ownership of our own role in our own lives and what what we need to do for ourselves, right? So I, I think it's super important that we use reflection. Um, let me see if I can find what our author wanted us to know about reflection. Oh, it's under winter solstice. Back of the wire and find it. <laughs> there it is, winter solstice. Winter solstice. Reflection. This midpoint of winter is not only the shortest day of the year, but also the longest night. The world is very still and the land dormant. Various festivals of light are celebrated and have been for thousands of years, serving as a reminder that the light will indeed return. Oh yeah, it will. Throughout many cultures, there are tales describing this time as the birth of the archetypal Sun King, including the Christian story of Jesus' birth, representing the hope of renewal from the darkest period of the solar cycle. So, you know, Christmas, a lot of Christians celebrate Christmas around the winter solstice. Um, this image portrays a simple yet powerful representation of winter solstice. We see a clear reflection of the snowy woods on the still frozen winter waters of the lake. The blue tint drapes the scene with an even greater sense of quiet and solace, inviting us to walk very softly, lest we disturb the intense yet gentle grace of this scene. The reflection of the trees on the frozen lake reminds us that it is time for us to go inside to both our physical shelter as well as our internal world, and there contemplate the season that has passed the season that is and the season yet to come. So it's important to take a few moments and reflect, right? Uh, reflection is super important on the past year. Um, this year is 
it's June and many of us are reflecting on a lot and I'm telling you this coming winter solstice is gonna be <laughs> really big for a lot of us but we don't have to wait till then we can start reflecting right now on you know how we are midway of the year and where we're at and what we're doing with our lives and what we're not doing with our lives and where we want to be with our lives and those are all really good things um, so we don't have to wait till the winter solstice to have reflection, but we can uh, do that anytime we want to go within ourselves and take a few moments to reflect. I try to reflect at the end of every day on uh, my day because some days are awesome and they're great. Like today was an awesome day. I got to spend the day with my sister and have dinner and uh, with a friend uh, the, of theirs that also came over to their house and made cupcakes and I mean I know that doesn't seem like a whole lot of fun to some people but and maybe it does to you but that was a super awesome day for me because I rarely get to see my sister and hang out with her because she's busy working and I'm busy doing my things too and uh it's taking the time for those types of little um, moments that really help us um, tap into the important things in life. So that was a really good one. I really like that one. Again, that's Earth Magic Oracle Cards by Dr. Stephen Farmer, and I'll post those the, the link in in the description box so that you guys can go and find them if that's something that you want. Uh, another one that I really love, and I, and I love this author, she's, I've got several oracle decks of hers, and she's got super awesome messages that uh, usually uh, fall in line with exactly what it is that I need to find, and uh, her healing affirmation oracles from nature's angels is what she um, calls it, this is called the Wings of Wisdom deck. Um, super cute I mean, and they're different they're like a little bit longer but again like her affirmations and I have quite a few decks from her her affirmations are just the bomb I love them love them love them and she's always got these really cute cards um, again I am a texture person if you get to know me I love soft <laughs> uh, but I love these cards as well, and it just seems like whenever I pick out these cards, I, <laughs> it's something that I need to hear. Oh my gosh, this is a great one. This is a great one. So this one is called Beetle, and it says Progress, Co-Creation, Accomplishment, and the affirmation is I am empowered to build a legacy of love and thrive in sacred community. Oh, that's awesome. And there's a message on the back, and I'll read it to you in just a second, but I want to show you um, the artwork of this card. And it is just super adorable, cute little girl. It says, there are others who can help you. As you fulfill your life purpose, you can help others fulfill theirs. Oh, well, isn't that awesome? Because that's what life's about. Balance your individual efforts with teamwork to make the most progress. There is no need to do everything on your own. Because often we do try to do that, don't we? We don't ask for help. <laughs> and there is power in asking for help. There really is. No matter how intimidating or difficult a situation may seem right now, you have what it takes to move through it successfully. Absolutely. You have always been given the power to move through whatever challenges and that you might have in life. Know that. Do not give up. Be open to innovative approaches and trust you will instinctively find a way. 
you will successfully carry out remarkable tasks in this lifetime. Wow. That is awesome. I love reading these cards from her because she's just always got so many insightful things that she says. So, so far today, we've learned a couple different affirmations. One, I'm going to follow the guidance of my heart. And then the second one here, I am empowered to build a legacy of love and thrive in sacred community. And uh, the other one is the from the Earth Oracle cards that we are going to reflect on the the winter solstice, right? Because our hearts are ox and our minds are uh, always in need of some type of reflection, um, period. And that helps us move through the changes in our life, whether they were good or challenging ones. Um, we all need a little bit of encouragement and reflection. So the last one I have is brand new deck to me uh, by Lucy Cavendish. And it's called the Foxfire, Foxfire, the Kitsume Oracle. And that's what it looks like. It is absolutely beautiful. Got this beautiful Japanese young lady on the front. And her artwork is just so fiery and awesome. I just love it. Kitsune. Amazing. Just beautiful. So these are totally brand new to me. I've never even opened them. But oh my gosh, how gorgeous. So blessed to have these gorgeous cards and the messages that they have for me. So I'm just going to quickly shuffle them here and see. Oh, look at them. We got these cute little red foxes on the front, you guys. Look at that. Kind of in a yin and a yang. Oh, I love foxes. I tell you, they're the cutest little animals, and they're so smart. So smart. I know people say, oh, cunning like a fox. Not really, actually. They're just smart. <laughs> <laughs> they know they're survivors <laughs> they know how to uh, make it happen and survive the long winter don't they um, it's just awesome so let's see what message we get out of this one and then I have a very special treat for you it's sitting right next to me and it is one of the most favorite things ever for me I just uh I'm not going to spoil it yet. I'll tell you what it is in a minute. So, let's see what it says. This is Shadow Dancer. Aw, it's a cute fairy. I love fairies. Ooh, and I like the fact that she's got two-toned hair. Those of you that like ombres and balayage and all that would probably appreciate this and give me your hair color, but there it is. Let me just... Who's the artist? The artist is Meredith Stillman. She's just amazing. I love art, you guys, because uh, art is so expressive. I mean, <laughs> you could you could say a lot with art. I just love art. All right, so let's see what the message is from this one, Shadow Dancer. Shadow Dancer moves through the forest, finding those who have a strong belief in who they are, how they can change, and who they can become, revealing them to the hidden self that they have shunned and avoided. When the Shadow Dancer comes, you will slowly come to illuminate the unknown within, and in this way, the lost and unloved parts of yourself will be able to come home to you and in time become a part of you that will offer you so much richness and creativity. This mysterious being brings you the blessing that so many of us refuse in this lifetime, the opportunity to work with their shadow. Isn't that the truth? 
many of us shy away from the things that uh, scare us about ourselves, right? Uh, I pulled an affirmation once that said, um, the thing that scares you the most is the thing that will lead you to success, right? And uh, yes, that's the truth. I think it's meant to be that way because if we don't overcome our fears, we can't really become our higher selves because I, I think those are the trials and tribulations that really help us become who we are meant to be. Isn't that awesome? So many flee from her wisdom, but those who stay find many blessings more than if they had practiced avoidance. To dance with the shadow, to know the shadow, is a great challenge. It is not as simple as acknowledging our less unpleasant qualities. It is to acknowledge that within us there is much more that we are unaware of. And that in order to come to know the shadow self, we must become humble and feel our way into our own deeper self. In this way, our own tendencies become illuminated over time and with patient, steady work. This work can take deep self-love, compassion, and often self-care. Boy, isn't that the truth. Oftentimes, we neglect ourselves and for other people, for other purposes, and for things that just really don't even matter. And in the end, we waste a lot of time um, that we should be spending on ourselves, right? Uh, it says, this is a process of seeing the unknown that lies within our own souls. This is not a process of self-condemnation, but one of self-discovery and deep self-love. Oh, that's awesome. That is great. So that those are just awesome messages, you guys. Dance with your shadow so that you can figure out the things that you need to overcome to be your best self. That is amazing. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> so, let's see here. That is the last deck I'm going to go through in card. Those are some pretty awesome affirmations. Again, I am going to um, put those in the description box so that if you want to find them, you can too. Uh, but you're always welcome to come join me here every day. I would like to, at least five days a week, I'm going to try to do that. Five days a week, I'm going to post um, positive affirmations for you so that you can come in and maybe try to find a, a message. And who knows, you might find an affirmation from weeks before that I've done or uh, whatever. But whatever message is in these affirmations, it must be what the universe wants you to hear that day, and I hope that it brings you some kind of joy and positivity in your life, and that it helps you along your journey. Maybe it helps you answer a question you've been asking for a while. You never know. So I did earlier say that I was going to share something that was um, a positive thing uh, for me that I absolutely love and one of those things is my singing bowl. Um, I think in other videos I've posted how much I love sound and sound therapy and music and sound is something in vibration. It's part of the name of my videos, uh, Divine Vibrations. Uh, vibrations and frequencies are very important in our lives. It really helps us um, align our chakras and um, really come into um, a right frequency for our own selves, right? So one of the ways that I align my chakra is through my quartz singing bowls. And I am in the future going to post uh, videos of um, a sound bath that I will be doing. So please uh, stay tuned and look forward to that uh, because I love music and sound. And so let's go ahead and um, I'm going to just do a little bit of sound therapy with this and hopefully that helps just align your, your chakras for the day. 
This is, uh, I believe, in C, the note C. And is it C? Yes, it's C. And it's for the crown chakra. And um, here we go.
i totally treasure that so thank you so much and don't forget to hit the notification bell when i upload more affirmations for the day and i hope you have a blessed day namaste